Hello, Sam from Sound on Sound magazine here. I'm at Superbooth in Berlin, and I'm with someone who could be fairly described as a legend of the synth world, Mr. Well, Dave Russell. Hello, yeah. Dave. Yeah. Lovely to see you. Glad to have be here. Glad you're here with us. Well, and, and excited to see your new products, which you're exhibiting for the first time. Uh -huh. uh, one of them rejoices in the title of the Panharmonium. Tell us yes. about this. So Panharmonium is just a crazy idea that Bob Bliss, our uh, 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 programmer, and he's also the author of the EOS operating system, for those of you emulator lovers. Um, Bob came up with this great idea of doing an analysis and then resynthesis engine. And uh, as the product has evolved, it just turned into this amazing creature uh, we're having so much fun with it. Every time I plug it in, it sounds different if I put a different sound into it, and I can always find something really neat to do. So um, it's fairly new, and, and we're still figuring out everything it can do. But I've got a bit of a demo set up that uh, will give you a, a tour around it and, and give you some idea of what's possible. The Panharmonium is $4.99, is in production right now. We expect the units to be available probably the first couple of weeks of June. So uh, Panharmonium is a... a there's a lot to be said about it. I'll try and go through it fairly quickly here. What I've got patched through right now is a, an assimilator over in the corner here, just playing a little segment out of a 80s Cars tune. And I can switch between different segments of that so we can hear a little bit of difference in what Pan Panharmonia does. So just this little riff coming through. Right now we're mi listening to the dry mix coming out of the Panharmonium. As I turn up this knob, we'll make it now all the way wet, so now what we're listening to is the panharmonium resynthesizing that sound. It does a pretty faithful job with the default settings that I picked. But there's a bunch of fun things we can do. I can turn down, uh, let me first tell you quickly what panharmonium is doing. It's got an analyzer section. That is doing essentially what we call a Fourier transform. It's grabbing the sound in a little slice of time and looking and seeing what frequencies are present and then picking out the important ones. It's handing that to the re resynthesizer. The resynthesizer is an oscillator bag, literally 33 oscillators. They can have their own waveform. They can be voltage controlled and pitch as a bank and things like that. And that then takes these frequencies and reproduces them after you've modified them in some interesting way. We're not modifying anything right now, and it sounds the same. But if I just cut down the number of oscillators in that bank, We get nice, interesting effects there. If I switch over to the um, voice track and do that same thing, it's kind of amazing how low the voice count can go and still be intelligible as voice. Now I can pitch, change the pitch of those oscillators by either semitones or, or octaves. I can change the wave shape of the oscillator. Sine waves will reproducing what's coming through. Take it up to sawtooth waves. It gets a little brassy. Take it all the way down to pulse waveforms, and we basically got singing trumpets now. Now, as I mentioned, we do an analysis at a certain thing called the slice time. You can control the slice time. You can synchronize it to your existing clock of your system, or you can use it as a master clock for your sequencer and things like that. I've got a fast slice time happening right now, but if I slow down the slice time, we can now hear that it is being sliced up again. And moving from one slice to another, I can either blur them by making an envelope around the each slice be much longer, which extends them. Very resonant type of thing. Or the other thing that I can do is I can take the oscillators and force them to glide rather than switch between frames. Yeah, that makes everybody grin always. And then the wildest thing I can do, I'll turn the rate back up here a little bit more, I can give feedback around the system, which means I'm taking the result of the resynthesizer and throwing it into the analyzer. Gives you sort of an echo effect as I turn it up, but then if I start shifting the pitch, and if I turn the feedback up to 100% and yank away the input,
The whole thing just takes on a mind of its own. <laughs> um, you can uh, adjust, I, I won't do it here, but you can adjust the bandwidth of the analyzer so it'll just take out particular tones. Um, and you can voltage control essentially every parameter on the, on the thing. You also can save the results of analysis and use that as an input into the oscillator bank. Uh, you also can save the entire front panel as a preset so you can bring that up in live performance. All that is non-volatile memory so it stays through there. So, a lot of features. I haven't even touched all of them. There's a few hidden features I haven't mentioned. But uh, um, you get a lot of fun out of this module.